We are back, and we're going to keep working on this Java temperature converter. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to allow the user to decide whether they want to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. And so already we have working code now. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is we have to figure out, okay, uh, we already have this variable called output, and we have this J option pane show message dialog where we take the output and display it. So that's kind of the results. So in a way, it's it's showing the results. So I'll put on here a little comment. And now the interesting thing is that we can modify that output based on whether it's Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius. And um, also, of course, your program starts with a welcome anyway and asking their name. We haven't actually used their name, so I'm gonna use that in the next part here. And then this getting temperature, what we get from the user will depend on what we're, you know, what, what the conversion is. Same thing goes for the conversion, and same thing goes for the output. So in other words, all of this code is going to be different depending on what the user wants to do, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're, and this is kind of, we call this refactoring. Refactoring is you take an existing piece of code and then you make a modification to it. So our modification, of course, is making it a little bit more robust so that we can um, do different types of conversions. So the first thing we're going to want to do is ask the user what they want to do. Okay. So we go up here and um, we're going to go ahead and we need a new variable for this. And I've already created one up here. We called it conversion type. And this conversion type variable is actually going to be asking the user what type of conversion they want to make. And so we're going to do that right here. So it's conversion type equals, and it's the J option pane. So I'll code it and then come back. Uh, so I started typing this out, and this is kind of a bit of a longer question. And so we're going to go ahead and ask the question, as you can see it here. But I need to help the user determine what are they going to enter to tell us that it's going to be Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down two lines. We're going to use backslash N. Let's escape N, which means new line, new line. It's going to go down two lines. And then we're going to say uh, type 1 for Fahrenheit to Celsius. backslash n and then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it's type 2 for Celsius to Fahrenheit. So that way we give them the option. Now they're going to be entering a 1 or a 2 and so there are two ways um, to do where we compare what they say. So in conditional execution we're going to have our setup so they're going to type 1, they're going to type 2, or they might not understand and type something else, or they might accidentally hit return before they type it. And they might, you know, add a dot or something. There's any ways they can do it wrong. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we account for that. So there's really three different outcomes. Um, one is that it's uh, type, they, they typed one for Fahrenheit to Celsius, type two Celsius to Fahrenheit, or something else. So we're gonna check with the keyword called if. And we set up our, uh, it's called a comparison. And so this is kind of the general syntax of what it should look like. And so now what we want to do is we want to check conversion type. Now, in some programming languages, you might have something like this. And you just do this little comparison here and then run it. Um, I tried that. And, and because in Python you can do it, and I'm guessing other program, programming languages you can do it. And I tried it and, it, and even though you typed one, it wouldn't actually do what was in there. And I was really trying to figure out why that was until I realized um, that when it comes to strings and you're making comparisons, you can't do it this way. Um, what you have to do is you have to put a dot and it's equals. Okay. And so what you're doing here is, now, conversion type is our string. It's a variable that's a string. And every string object has a series of methods it can do, one of which is equals. And it basically takes a string and it compares it to this variable. 
And the reason why is the way strings are. It's the way they're stored is why it does it. I won't go into the detail. But at this point, that's how you want to do it as a string. The only other option you could do is you could create yet another variable like choice as a integer or something and then convert that uh, convert conversion type into an integer by parsing it out. Um, we're just going to do it this way, make it a little simpler. Okay. So if conversion type equals one, then we're going to actually use all of this code right here from getting the temperature down to producing the output. Now I'm just going to cut that, go in here and I'm going to paste it. Cut and paste is nice because even though it was tabbed over, everything got tabbed over. Okay, so now we have a couple other options here, and that is if, and it's conversion type again, dot equals. Now notice you've got uh, all these different ones here. C contained, does it have something inside? Is it empty? And all of these, usually what happens is you're going to see, and I'll show you the equals. Oops. Let me go back here for a second because I, I want you to see this. If you see equals, look what it returns. It returns a Boolean. So you send it an object in the form of a string, and it's either going to say true or false. So it either equals that string or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it returns a false. If it does, it returns a true. Now we want to get the temperature. We want to basically do all this in reverse. And so we'll do that in just a moment. The last thing is we'll cover the easier one, which is else. In other words, this is our catch all. If nothing else works, we're going to go ahead and do a J option pane and just a show message dialog. And we'll give it a null and we'll put on here, oops. That is not one of our hit enter, go back, hit enter uh, options. Now at this point, we're just covering how to do this conditional execution. And uh, actually, I'm going to cut this out and move it down here just so it, it's a little bit easier. Um, and then in the future, what we'll do is we'll make it so that if this happens, we're going to keep asking. And we'll do a thing called uh, exception handling. So we're going to try it, and if we don't get the right output, then we're going to go ahead and do it the other way. So anyway, so else is a catch-all. If neither of these happen, this is what occurs. And so the last thing we want to do now is do all of this, yet do it uh, and, and convert it the other way. Now, don't know why it did it or it didn't tab it over. So we're going to get the temperature. Um, and we're going to do it like here. And this time we're going to change this from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then now it's going to be the opposite. So it's going to be Celsius equals double dot parse double temp input. That's the same because there's our variable. Okay, so temp input is a catch-all. We can use it anytime we're going to input a temperature as a string. So we parse it. Now we're going to do the reverse. See, it doesn't like this. It doesn't like it because Fahrenheit might not have a value. And in just a moment, we're going to give it a value. We do have a value for Celsius. So basically, this is going to be the opposite now. So Celsius is not equal, um, or Fahrenheit now is going to be, sorry, I'm like pausing here for a moment as I try to figure it out. It's actually going to be Celsius. Let's get this variable here. Celsius times 5 divided by 9, and then we're going to add 32 in its place. And that converts it, and then we just change this. Celsius is, oh, we're going to round Celsius. And then we're going to format Fahrenheit degrees. Now, a couple things for you to notice before we run it and test it out, and this should be good. I, I think it's good, but we're going to find out for sure in just a moment. Is notice we create the output variable up here. We initialize it to blank, um, and then we set it here, our output, um, in, in the case where they want to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. 
We do the same thing here if it's the opposite. And then finally the output, ah, we made a mistake here. There we go, it's a good thing I checked, checked this out. Output equals. So, uh, and we can't do it as J option pane, right? Because we're not showing it, we're just setting the value of option. And get rid of that to clean it up. I apologize because that was not what we needed to do. At this point, this should show us the results. By the way, don't feel bad if you make mistakes. It happens all the time, even if you know what you're doing and you've done it for a long time. So we're going to go ahead and try to run this and see how it works. Welcome your user with a nice message here. Make sure you do that. Don't leave that saying that. How embarrassing. Uh, what's your name? Well, I'm 100 Visions Guy. And then here we go. Type 1 for Fahrenheit to Celsius. Type 2 for Celsius to Fahrenheit. We'll go ahead and test one out. Uh-oh. Input. What happened there? I don't like that. Let's try it again. Uh, was that a problem with my program? Or was it a show input dialog? This is one. It worked before. Let's just try it again. I, I don't know if that was a problem with the program. And we'll just try it out. HVG. There we go. Don't know why it didn't do it the first time. Um, that is something worth looking into. Uh, for temperature in Fahrenheit, let's do 32 degrees. It should be zero Celsius. Oops, that's not one of our options. Uh, okay, what did I do wrong there again? I forgot to put one or two, didn't I? Well, there you go. One for Fahrenheit to Celsius. Aha, here it is, input temperature. See, even teachers teaching Java might make a mistake. It could happen to anyone. Uh-oh, that's not one of our options. All right, we do have a problem here, Houston, and I remembered what it was. Okay, this is great. I'm so glad we came across this. What did I do wrong? I thought I set it up just right. Well, there's a problem with the else and the way it works. And this is called control flow or code path. What it did is it checked here. Was it equal to one? Yes, it was. So did we get the temperature? Yes, we did. Did we convert it? Sure. Did we get the output? Yeah. Then what did we do? We checked, was conversion type equals two? No, it was equal one. So guess what it did? It skipped this, but it chained the else right after. So basically, if all you do is an if, the next if by itself is by itself. So once it did this, it made that comparison again. What we needed to add was else if. There you have it. See that? Else if. So if it wasn't that, is it this? And if it wasn't that, then we do it. Let's run it. See, I told you, you gotta test this out. If I hadn't tested it out, guess where I would be? I'd be in the doghouse. I might not even know it. What if I typed two? I wouldn't have found out until I typed one. Now we do Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is zero degrees. I might want to add the Celsius piece there. We'll test it out. That was one. You want to test out all your code paths. Okay, we're going to do two because we want to do Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to type in 100 degrees Celsius. That is boiling point, so it should be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. When I click OK, it's not. Um, so one of the things you want to do whenever you write programs is you got to test, especially when you have any calculations and especially when you have any kind of conditional execution. Sure enough, I had to verify. And if we click on this link here, we see this method multiply by 9, then divide by 5, then add 32. I did that wrong, and that was my fault. Multiply by 9 then divide by five. I might be a little dyslexic and then add 32. Let's test it out. And we do two and we do, we're gonna do zero this, uh, we'll do 100. There we go. Uh, there you have it and um, good luck. The next phase what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some loops and we are going to try to loop this until the user gets it right. So on this else, we don't want that to keep happening. And we also want to continue um, running this until the user is done making conversions. So good luck. Stay tuned.